Hey guys, my daily recap. Uh, I was having a very slow morning to start the morning out, and I wasn't doing any trading to speak of, uh, some small stuff. And uh, then I got some really good uh, late morning uh, trades, two of them, back to back. I was like, wow, I can't believe this. One in Tesla, one in Boeing. And then I'm actually holding, holding, holding Boeing into next week. Okay, what I'm seeing here. And I had mentioned that I'm ex I'm seeing a potential explosive move setting up here in the diamonds, and guess which what what which stock is the most heavily weighted stock in the uh, Dow Jones, Boeing. So there is a rumor out coming out today that since we're poking up above, so basically what's happening right here? I want you to be aware here. We just now crossed above the OPEX. Uh, January OPEX for the diamonds. So basically, everybody who's holding the diamonds, who rolled them last month, now all of a sudden we're getting a headline that Boeing might, uh, they, the, the FAA is going to be coming out next week, but possibly certifying them for flight next week. That was the headline news for uh, out on Boeing here. Well, Boeing is the one that's going to push the, uh, the diamonds higher, okay, in my opinion. So basically, we have a potential explosive move with these expanded uh, Venom lines into next week, all the way up for the 298 tests, in my opinion, for the diamonds. So I'm planning my trade ahead now and starting to load up positioning in, in the uh, Boeing. I've already got a position. I took a position, took some profit off. I've got another position running, and then at the close, I'm actually going to add to that position, I believe. So if it's still a winner, if it's a winner, so I'm going to add to winning positions on Boeing from here, uh, into uh, thinking that we are going to get the explosive move to 298 next week. So that's the I'm giving you an idea how I'm planning my trade ahead of time going into next week, and hopefully that'll help you guys uh, make some money uh, going forward here, and hopefully the markets don't fall apart on us, and and uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, at least not until uh, they can satisfy what they're trying to achieve with the uh, diamonds. The fact that they had that press release today, I've just I'm amazed how often the press releases hit right whenever we cross a, a significant hurdle, and this is one of those significant hurdles. So there's some very smart people in Washington. I think they're planning all these press releases uh, at specific times in the market to keep the ball going higher okay so uh that's uh it, it happens uh, consistently T too consistent for it to be uh just a, a rare chance okay and boeing it just seems to be rocking here i just got a small position and uh, i went with arthur on his trade and i just uh I, I started out small because i'd already taken my profits and i just cannot believe how boeing is performing here and uh who knows, we might actually get that explosive move before the end of the week. Now, my purple lines right here on this chart, that represents uh, the expected move for this week. We've already got a two standard deviation move. So that's why I'm a little concerned we're going to get an explosive move up into the resistance. But that's how tops happen in the market. You get those explosive moves out. You don't expect them to happen, just like Tesla. And that marks a significant uh, topping pattern or the near term in the markets. So that could very well happen oh, in the overnight session. We get an explosive three standard deviation move in the Dow Jones overnight, 300. It'd be about 350 points, 350, 400 point move that would put us over the top in the market. So keep that in mind, uh, what could possibly ha be happening, um, making a massive three standard deviation move in the overnight session. So just keep that in mind. I actually started my day, <coughs> uh, excuse me, uh, right up here near the highs. There was no value to speak of earlier this morning. Well, we were right up here near the highs. This was my target for the day. And between Mark saying he wasn't too impressed with the earnings, and I already had a negative bias in, in the morning session, and then we had the... Uh, uh, Market selling off first thing this morning because uh, I had already talked out how the 
the Qs, the IWM, and the SPY were all what looked to me like they were up into resistance in a potential sell-off scenario for today. So we once we got up above this thing, I actually started initiating some uh, puts on, test, on Twitter, despite the fact it had so much relative strength. I had actually, right at the open, had an order in, and it blew right through my order. So I couldn't even get the bit massive run up there right out of the out of the gate this morning on Twitter. It was it went so fast. You just um, you you had to have your order a you know without even knowing what the price is going to be. You know by the first by the time I got the first print, there was nothing I could do. It was already gone. It, it already left the station. So the, you know, there's not much you can do in that situation. Okay, so. Uh, Basically, I did try to get the puts. My goal was right here. You see how this volume uh, had dropped off here? Uh, I was going to try to take it for a responsive uh, retrace back to the 37.59, which would have been a fairly decent uh, profit. Well, it was, I could tell with the markets dropping, it was showing so much relative strength right there at the very get go that I cashed out even on that trade. So, uh, but that gives you some logic why I was going with some puts. Uh, it, because the tape was going negative first thing this morning. And I just, this is just one amazing uh, move up here in the markets on Twitter. But yeah, I initially, I did want to join the room and go to the long side. But once I missed that, I was actually just trying to get a scalp trade down to my target because we had went past my, uh, I would have been cashing out the for opening minutes on uh, Twitter because it had already uh, left the station beyond my uh, target. So, uh, you know, if I would have managed to get in. So, uh, but a quite amazing move here in Twitter. Okay. Okay, as soon as I heard the news in from the room, and thank you guys for pointing it out in the room, uh, you know, be sure and like it and stuff because I really appreciate all your guys' help in the room and stuff because I would have never caught this trade if you hadn't called it out in the room. But I saw that responsive dip right here in Boeing, and I just assumed the news was accurate, uh, you know, and I just blindly, you know, t took jumped in with the rest of you guys in the room and uh, managed to catch a nice little dip on Boeing. I held it for three minutes, had a nice return on the trade in about three minutes' time in Boeing. So really, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for the call out in the room on Boeing. So uh, I love those little three minute trades. So it was great. Uh, thanks. <laughs> and Tesla was my call out based on my technical analysis. And basically I was calling a topping pattern right here on Tesla. And uh, so I carried it all the way down basically to, to i had an order it actually filled before the spreads were so wide it actually filled before the actual touch of the 50 sma on the one minute um i couldn't imagine how, how far those spreads were out but i i no more and put the order in and boom it filled and it still hadn't it still had more room to go and it, I, I was i was a dollar it, i was a dollar uh, away from the mid anyway at that point, but I couldn't believe uh, it actually filled on me. It's amazing how when those spreads fill, uh, sp when the bid ask spreads get out, what you can get away with. Uh, okay, and uh, I sold right here, had a really nice little profit on my trade, and that made my day. So, you know, uh, on that little trade right there. And basically, what I was looking for, uh, uh, I was in the room and I called a short term bottom. Uh, this right here virtually had zero volume at that point right there. And at the time, the value area low was ab above that. So the, I thought at that point that we that could potentially be a low for the day. But as you can see, we are coming down to my primary uh, 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 potential bottom. Uh, if, if the markets were to hold up here, that would be a potential bottom scenario for Tesla uh, if buyers were to step up. I am actually really bearish on Tesla. I think it's going down to 640. Was it 646 is my target on Tesla? So we're looking at $100 lower than this. That is my primary support for Tesla. So, you know, anytime. Uh, so this was major resistance as far as I'm concerned for Tesla. We can probably see responsive selling all the way into the end of the day tomorrow on Tesla uh, from this point forward. So 
just keep that in mind. Uh, the way the uh, developing values at the time were going, the uh, VPOC was right up here. When I, when I took that trade, the VPOC was above this red line. I mean, the highest volume to do to business today, it was right here at the highs of the day. And it just, the volumes really started spiking up here right when I was taking the, took that trade. And uh, we had all this sell-off since then. And if you notice, the uh, prices are being accepted lower since we hit that high. So, so everybody and their brother was pushing price up to here. And boy, the sellers came in and boom. They, so whenever you see that developing VPOC just pop up there just in the instant right above resistance, you know it's time to initiate shorts. So, um, and then, uh, let's see here, did I do Boeing? Yeah, I did Boeing already, okay. Okay, that's pretty much my day. I'm calling it a day. And uh, uh, the only thing I'm probably going to do, I'm probably going to add another third to my Boeing position uh, if I have a nice, uh, if it closes near the highs of the session, okay? And that's pretty much it. Uh, when you have a good day, you don't want to push it too hard. And I am going to keep my audio on and watch the chat room in case you guys call out some news, breaking news on any type of stocks or anything that would be a potential uh, short-term, uh, you know, uh, trade that I might do today. So thanks. Thanks everything for, for everything in the room, guys.